This week we're back in London and the royal pickle of space versus location. With two scrupulous sets of subjects. And that usually ends up getting his way. There's a court jester in our midst. Oh, Phil, you look small today. <laughs> but would our choice of residences be granted the seal of approval? Absolutely astonished. It's very small. Or were we simply courting trouble? Ian's looking worried. No, I'm not worried. No. I always look like this. <laughs> <laughs> This week, we're catching up with two sets of hard-working young professionals who were looking to claim a corner of the capital as their very own. We certainly had a tall order with six-foot-seven identical twins, Chris and Matt Wickham, who were looking to make the biggest purchase of their lives so far together. And trainee solicitor Gemma Pollock was after her first home with help from Dad Ian, but with a wish list at odds with her budget. Unlike other parts of the country, demand for buying property in the big smoke has risen ahead of supply. There just isn't enough on the market. And to top it off, in the wealthy pockets, house prices have gone up and up and up. So if you want a posh postcode, be prepared to pay the price. This time, our search is for properties with the right potential, focused mainly south of the river, from Wimbledon to Clapham to Putney. London is home to Western Europe's tallest building, so hopefully it's a city that can accommodate our tallest first-time buyers. 26-year-old identical twins Matt and Chris Wickham have identical housing needs. They've both outgrown their rental pads. So they've been working hard and between them they've saved up a whopping 20 grand deposit to buy their own place. Ideally as close as possible to their finance jobs in the city. We looked at a few places. We looked a bit in North London, but it was, it was just so expensive there, it was becoming impossible. Their money may not stretch far, but at six foot seven, these basketballing brothers also have a size issue. The fact that we are quite tall does impact on what we're looking for. High things would be lovely, I think, so that we don't have to duck. With little things like our, we have big feet, so our shoes take up a lot of space. With size 14 feet, they're going to need some super-sized storage. Very sadly, the boy's father recently passed away. They've decided to use the inheritance to top up their deposit and increase their budget to 350 grand, hopefully helping them find their perfect pad. It's been a dream of ours to kind of buy with each other, and there are very few people you can enter into a mortgage with and someone you can trust implicitly, like my brother. But these two peas in a pod do have some differences. I've been told that I can be very uh, I can be awkward, I like things the way I like them, sort of thing. I would describe Matt as stubborn. Stubborn. Sound familiar, Kirsty? What I need to know from you two is what's not important. If the bedrooms weren't exactly the same size, I think that's something we could compromise on. As long as we can stand up straight. <laughs> and, you know, for us, location is the most important thing. You have 350000 to spend. Do you feel the weight of the responsibility of investing that money wisely? Definitely, yeah. We, we want to make the best use of it. London is one of the most expensive places to live in the world. And what you're seeing does not reflect what you're spending. Yeah, we're not, we're not afraid of doing a bit of work no. to a property. And, yeah. and we're also, we are realistic. Right, OK, drink up, because okay, okay. flats don't find themselves. Thank goodness we'd both be out of a job. Matt and Chris ideally want no more than a 40-minute commute to work in the city. And have high expectations when it comes to location, preferring the central spots north of the river, like Pimlico and Victoria. But I will also be pushing them south to show them how much more they can get for their money. For £350,000, Matt and Chris are after a place with two equal-sized bedrooms. As this won't be a forever home, they'd like good investment potential, they aren't afraid of getting their hands dirty with a bit of work. Oh, and no hitting their heads on the ceiling. Our other search requires an equally concerted effort. Gemma's a 22-year-old trainee solicitor with more than one string to her bow. A high achiever, she hits the high notes in the orchestra she plays with in her spare time and also in her career. I got offered a job with um, a law firm down here. I thought it'd be a good idea to get used to living in London, Relocating to London from County Durham has been a massive step for Gemma, so her dad Ian's keeping a watchful eye. 
She thinks she's cleverer than me now because she's a big high shot lawyer with a degree. But she doesn't know as much as she thinks she does. Brain box she may be, but street savvy she's not. Green to London, Gemma and her friend have rushed into renting in Peckham, an area where she doesn't feel at home. It's causing Ian to lose a little sleep. We were shown this flat after seeing quite a lot of other ones that weren't very nice. It's not dangerous, but it doesn't have a comfortable feel about it. He is very protective, both my parents are. They always like to know that I've got home if I'm out late on my own. Gemma's determined she wants to live on her own, but she can't afford it yet. So, like up to 80% of first-time buyers under 30, she's getting a little helping hand from her parents. They've generously decided to remortgage the family home to the tune of £80,000. A lot of people invest in property. We're investing in property and in our daughter at the same time. And, you know, we know we're going to get a return on that. Since getting herself in a pickle about postcodes, Gemma swatted up on South London and decided she'd like more of a rural feel for her first home. So, Gemma, it's your fault we're standing here in a freezing <laughs> cold, windy Wimbledon Common. Because this is where you'd ideally like to live. In an ideal world, yeah. You want somewhere that you can come home to which is yours and which is cosy and safe. Yeah. But also that's got the space for, for, for a big sofa bed, for my family to be able to come down and stay when they can. Ian, what's most important to you? In terms of for security for Gemma, we want somewhere where she'll be happy. In terms of the investment side, we want to be able to sell it at some point <laughs> and hopefully get our money back. Do you think with our help and your increasing knowledge of London, we might be able to find you something in an area? that you feel a bit better about. That's what I need. I just need someone yeah. to point me in the right kind of areas to where I'll be better off for commuting yeah. and things like that. Gemma's a woman who knows exactly what she wants. Hmm, sounds like someone I know. So the sooner we get off this blustery common and start searching, the better. Gemma and her dad have got £200,000 to spend on a one-bedroom flat. It needs to offer decent inside space, resale potential and be in the Wimbledon area. And while you're at it, please may I have a full head of hair? The only plus on these searches is that we have a home advantage. Yeah, nice completely on home ground, know what I'm talking about, know the streets, know the areas, all of that's really good. You know what you're talking about and yeah, everything. This, is, this yeah. is going to be interesting. Thank you, Phil. The average age of a first-time buyer in London is 32. That's two years older than the rest of the UK. Compared to this, our guys are getting in early, but it's a major life step. And it's up to us to see they spend their money wisely. First up, we're in Wimbledon, where Gemma would love her first home to be. A really swanky one-bed flat here can set you back a staggering half a million pounds. Whoa there, can I just remind you of Gemma's budget? We've got less than half half a million pounds. So that means getting all Gemma wants will be incredibly tough. Wimbledon lies seven miles southwest from the centre of London. It's home to the most famous tennis championships in the world. But the real attraction in this area is Wimbledon Village, with its pretty high streets lined with cafes, bars and fashionable boutiques. You would never know you were in London. I think this first property is the ace in the pack. They're going to love the location, which is a stone's throw from the common. So, Wimbledon Common. Yep. It would be hard to find a safer, more bird-cheeping tree-lined <laughs> street <laughs> than this. Yep. Lovely. Yeah, I'm quite encouraged. It's a nice, appealing-looking building. Yes. The gardens and grounds are nice. Yes. The area is spot on. Your dad's positive. How positive are you, Gemma? No, I like it. I like the look of the block. I really like the location. I like the security of it as well. Okie dokie. This 1960s building has a smart exterior and the bonus of a secure entry buzzer, which means Ian can sleep easy. It's in beautiful nick and perfectly formed, but small. Will it have enough space for Gemma and her extensive collection of books? It's on the market at £195,000, so it is in budget. So, this flat is really what you were describing. It's little mm -hmm. and it's a nest. Very small. Yeah, the kitchen's very small. It's nicely done, though. It's nicely done out of the spaces. It's not the smallest I've seen. This property was originally a studio flat. The entire space is about 323 square feet. As well as all her books, Gemma has got a piano to squeeze in. 
I think I can probably get everything in. I think the piano could go really? either along here with the television on the wall or even possibly along there. She thinks she can make it work. Good on her. When I bought, we, myself and your mother bought our first home, as soon as we walked in the door, we knew we can see ourselves in this. Mm -hmm. Do you get that sort of vibe from it? I do, oh. to a certain... <laughs> I, I do to an extent. It's a nice property and it's nicely done. It's whether, with everything in it that was mine, it'd be too much of a compromise. That's what you've got to weigh up. It's yeah. location of its size, isn't it? It's always yeah. going to be the case. Put your feet up, Kirsty. Sounds like they don't need you on this search. So, first flat. Yep. yep. Quite impressed. The only compromise is the size inside. But as you said, there's always a compromise. Well, let's go and see some other flats. Flats which need a bit of work. And then see where you're at. Okay. Okay. But okay. good start. I've got to admit, what worries me is the fact that she's got more books than clothes. Yes. Because... <laughs> You've scored on location, Ms. Allsop, but Gemma's clearly holding out for a bit more space. This week we're back in London catching up with young first-time buyers. The first flat we showed trainee solicitor Gemma was in the perfect spot but didn't match her high hopes space-wise. And towering twins Matt and Chris also had expectations through the roof. For their first property we were staying south of the Thames in the bustling area of Putney. Here the average price of a flat is a hundred grand over the boys' budget. But the place we found in East Putney is affordable, partly because of the work that's needed. Oh, Phil, you look small today. <laughs> Thank you, Kirsty. How to make me feel nice? <laughs> oh, no, we're here, we're here. We're kind of equidistant between Wandsworth Town train station and East Putney tube station. So you've got both of them within a 10 minute walk from here. Oh, fantastic. We've got long legs, we can walk. We've got long legs. We can so walk uh, legs. under a 10 minute walk is probably two minute walk for you two, isn't it? Right, in we go. Thank, Thank you. you. They may not mind a morning stroll, but their commute to work from here could take up to an hour, longer than the 40 minutes they'd like. But this two-bed first-floor flat is in a great area and is bang on budget. The living room is a great space for our lads, with plenty of scope to make it their own. The compromise lies in the bedroom size. God, this is lovely. Wow. It's, it's a good size, so, yeah, this really good high size. ceilings. I think the first impression is it feels big and roomy to me. Really airy. It does take a lot of our boxes at the moment. This is a lot bigger than I thought we it's would a, yeah, be looking no, at. Its condition is letting it down. Mm. If you two spent one Saturday in this flat, you could add £10,000 to the value, and that is not no well, word it, of exaggeration, it, is it? Possibly more. No, that's the exciting thing I think about it. You could do a lot with it for little effort. Yeah. But will our supersized siblings remain as unfazed by the little and large bedrooms? There's definitely a senior bedroom and a junior bedroom, and I'm, I don't know how you would resolve that. Have ever. you thought about that? I'm not too fussy, and Matt usually ends up getting his way, so... <laughs> we'll see, we'll see what happens. Do you agree there, Matt? Uh, well, I'm painting me in a bad light, but no, um, possibly. Um, I think <laughs> I would make sacrifices. I'll do some more cooking or something. Compromising already. They'd make any mother proud. It looks like we might have to be a bit more creative with space in this room. Yes. I mean, there are lots of things you can do. You could move the kitchen into the living room. Yeah. Creating an open-plan kitchen living space means that this small bedroom could be knocked into the current kitchen, creating a giant sleeping space. It'd be something you'd have to save up for a little bit. Yeah. We will forewarned that it would be a big room and a small yeah. room. Um, I wasn't necessarily quite prepared for the, the size of this one, I think. Well, have a wonder, have a think. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Take your time. Thank you. Thank you. So size does matter in the bedroom. This room is massive to me. Yeah. Makes me wonder whether we actually need the space. Yeah. But there's too much square footage in the sitting room. It's a very good flat without all the things to compare it to. It's quite difficult. No, it is for. really difficult for them, but I'm really keen on how much value you can add to this flat. So, so time for some reflection at man. I think you can easily see that you could do something to it and make it a nice place to live. It's um, a great investment, but we would be willing to sacrifice the size to maybe reduce our commute in a little bit. Have we got a maybe in the bag? Definitely maybe, maybe in the bag. A definite maybe. Okay. <laughs> what do they like call this? it in basketball when you get a shot? Is it a shot? <laughs> Slam dunk. <laughs> slam dunk. Uh, so it's not quite a slam dunk, but it's, you know... It's getting there. It's getting there. Thankfully, you know more about property than you do about basketball, Kirsty. But what we both know is that although they like this flat, we can definitely do better. 
We're also hoping to do better space-wise in Wimbledon for trainee solicitor Gemma's first flat. Her dad Ian's helping out. We're still in their favourite area and near tennis courts, although these ones are perhaps not quite so famous. Being on this busy road means Gemma has great transport links on her doorstep, but handily the property is set back, so it isn't too noisy. This top floor flat has much more space than property one, 86 square feet to be exact, but it needs work if Gemma wants to recreate the style of the first flat. So if Ian's looking for a project, this place could be the one. It's come down in price to £205,000 and I'm confident we could get it for a bit lower, which would bring it in on budget. It's looking very neglected at the moment. Yeah, it's Agreed. a nice big space there. It's nice that it's up on the top floor. It'll be very safe. A lot of work needs doing on first impressions, which is a slight negative. I'll say the problems with the trees outside. It is going to block all the light coming into either of these windows. This property would definitely benefit from having this tree cut down. If Gemma and Ian think this flat is a contender, we could make an offer subject to tree surgery. Gemma likes the space, but Ian's face tells a different story. I don't know how keen Ian really is to do that much work. He's got the experience and capability to start this place up, mm. but he looked slightly crestfallen when he came in. Like he knew he could do it, but he didn't really fancy coming down to London and putting in a new kitchen and bathroom. But it might be unfair. Ever the sensible solicitor, Gemma's got her practical hat on. My concern was that Obviously, even if we can get it for 200 it then requires my mum and dad to put the money in initially to get it up the standard that we want it to. To me, if you could put that flat... No, don't say it, don't say it. Into, that, into that building, yeah. number one, that would be ideal. Yeah. And it would also be £300,000. Uh, exactly, yeah. yeah. Ian had better watch out. There's a bus approaching. If he carries on with that chat, Kirsty will throw him under it. Fortunately, we're making bigger strides with twins Chris and Matt. Oh, don't get run over, Matt. The next property I'm showing them is all about postcode. We're staying south, but heading to popular Clapham. High on the boys' list of preferred areas, there's a young vibe and plenty to do here. They do get a little less space for their money, but this flat offers oodles of curb appeal. What do we feel about this location? I'm absolutely astonished that we can afford somewhere around here. I mean, I know the area quite well. Mm -hmm. It's a five-minute walk to Clapham North Station. It is. 20-minute commute into the city from there. Location 10 out of 10. I mean... 10 out of 10! Oh, no! Chris is not so sure. I'll put it up as a solid 9. In we go. OK. Thumbs up for the location. Recently reduced, it's still five grand over budget. But I've been told there could be wiggle room. This is risky. Your last one failed on bedroom size. And this is even smaller. Yes, but it has period charm and very little to do to it. So, a smaller sitting room, but equally high ceilings, very light and in lovely nick. I can't believe we could afford somewhere like this. There are basically two bedrooms, neither of which would take two cats swinging around. Right. You know, one cat, fine. Little mouse, fine. Yeah. Two cats, no. Yeah. It's a lovely space. I mean, you've got yeah. practical use of shelves and things, so yeah. you can take it's everything you need. Yeah, asking price, 355. Oh, if it's the top end of our budget and it doesn't need work doing to it, then who can All the better, exactly, yeah. yeah. In terms of investment potential, the boys would struggle to add much value here. So they could just sit back and enjoy it. So, this is the smaller of the two bedrooms. I'm not as shocked as I don't know, it might be thought in a room this size. I've lived in a small room in my current location as well. And Matt's supposed to be the awkward one. I mean, I know it seems like a cheap trick, perhaps, if you put a mirror on there. On where? On the wall. The wall. Oh, no. each to Ideas, their own. ideas. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. He didn't mean a mirror on the ceiling, Kirsty. Let's move on and see if Chris is as laid back in the other bedroom. So. So. Not huge. It's, it's bigger than I thought. Really? Yeah, you undersold it, I think. Did I? <laughs> oh, that's rare. I mean, for, for the location and our budget, it's surpassed my expectations. Is it the location that is so fantastic, you're just like, as long as this flat is humanly habitable, we'll, well go for it? I can't really find a negative. I think you agree on this flat. We have no. pretty similar tastes. Yeah, no. It's good. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be easy. I think you're easy. 
Okay. In the good way, not the bad way. Okay, thanks, Kirsty. <laughs> I know what you're going to say. Oh, bless. So sweet. Just want to put them in my pocket, but they're a bit big to keep as pets. And think of the food bill. I mean, it's hands down better than the last one, and the last one was good, so I'm taken with it. Yeah. Top marks, Kirsty. So, gents, what do you reckon? Uh, I'm kind of blown away, really. Uh, I would agree. I'm astonished, actually. Do you want to see another flat? Yeah, I mean, if you can, <laughs> if you can better it, that'd be fantastic. But I mean... okay, okay, that is how I like to end a day. <laughs> Things are not so positive with Gemma. Along with Dad, she's viewed two properties in her preferred area of Wimbledon, but each one felt like too much of a compromise. We've got one last chance to find Gemma a safe haven in the city, so we're taking her a couple of miles out of her comfort zone. We want to show her how much more house she can get for her money in Tooting, an area that's on the up. It's a really good place to buy property because there's lots of bars coming up and cafes. It's great. You get a lot more space for your money in Tooting. It's, it's a fun place to live. It's the next affordable area in Wandsworth. She started off in Clapham. All the city workers then couldn't afford Clapham, so they came to Ballum. Now Tooting's the next one. It's certainly an area that I've long championed as a good bet. <laughs> Did you do a paper round around here, Phil? Is that true or no. is that just a myth? No. That's my <laughs> ground to wash a bit <laughs> Well, this is the one, number 67, double fronted. We're going to have a look at the flat up there. The front of this Victorian villa looks a little neglected, but work to tart it up will be done, dusted, and most importantly, paid for before any sale goes through. If the communal parts of a property clearly require work, check whether there are any existing plans and funds to carry this out. This upper conversion flat has a lovely communal garden at the rear, and inside there's plenty of space. There'll be no problem fitting all Gemma's books and her piano in here. It's on the market for £195,000, which is £5,000 under Gemma's budget. This is the largest of the three properties by far, but is there space enough to tempt her to toot in? Come on in. Welcome to 480 square feet. Uh -huh. Oh, massive. <laughs> It, well, it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's certainly big enough for you and for guests and visitors mm -hmm. to stay. It's spacious, that's the first thing you say, because of the high ceilings make it look bigger. It's nice, this space will be big enough for people to stay, which, mm. is, which is good. I've got an idea how Gemma could make the most of this space. This is currently the bedroom. OK. I think it should be the sitting room. Right, OK. There would have been a fireplace there, which you could reinstate. You could have all your books there. Switching the bedroom with the sitting room would allow Gemma to use this attractive space for entertaining. And the ceiling height is so good. It's lovely. Yeah. It really is nice. And it does make it feel bigger and lighter. At this point, do you want to run back to Wimbledon? Initially, but I think the fact's making me hesitate slightly because of how much potential there is in it and how big it is. Gemma's coming round to this place. But although she won't be living with her dad, if he's not smiling, she won't be taking on tooting. I know the two things that are most important to you are safety of Gemma and the safety of your money. I'm not saying we don't think she feels safe. It's just somewhere where she can... She doesn't feel nervous walking back on a night and... She doesn't feel nervous or, or you don't feel nervous about um, her? <clears throat> Probably the latter. If I had a daughter, I would be wanting to make sure she was absolutely safe. Yeah. Well, in your honest opinion, you think she's better off buying a bigger place further away? I think your money would be safe in both. Yeah. I think you'd probably make more money here, but there are greater risks involved, because it's not absolutely prime. So, location, 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 isn't it? Yeah. That's what she has to look at. I think this is a cracking flat, which delivers on both space and investment potential. But is this location right for Gemma? What do you reckon? I like it. It's very big. It's the area I'm not entirely convinced on. Sure. It's not Wimbledon, which sure. is what I know and what, yeah. what I like. It's absolutely fine. And from a safety perspective, really no problem at all. Phil Much says safer than where you, where you OK. Are Gemma says she's not sure. <laughs> just, just, just leave your number with Gemma. If she's got any problems, she'll give you a call. <laughs> <laughs> OK, see you soon. Before making any decision on a property, it's important to do your homework. 
Revisit the location at a different time of day to get a feel for the dynamic. And if, like Gemma, getting to work fast is top of your list, it's a good idea to road test your journey. Seems to be plenty of buses going from this area. Yeah, I think there's several that go to central London as well, which could be quite useful for a night and things. Oh, yeah. Gemma and her dad, Ian, seem tempted by the space on offer in Tooting. But will she feel confident taking a leap into the unknown? We're back in swinging London, where we're presenting the arguments for space over location with trainee solicitor Gemma. And it was virtually an identical case with twins Chris and Matt, who were favouring a popular postcode over extra space in the bedroom. We had one last chance to score with both location and size for the brothers' first flat together. And Kirsty took them to the final property by rather unconventional means. She's always known how to travel in style. How would you feel if this was your daily commute? I would be pretty happy with this as a commute, a lot better than the tube. The method of transport's floating Matt's boat, and you'll get points for postcode. Yep, and we've gone north of the Thames and ended up in Pimlico, a central spot I know they're going to love. Pimlico is in Westminster, the second most expensive borough in London, where the average house price is over £880,000. But because you can get more square footage for your money, ex-local authority can often be the smart choice for first-time buyers. So my wildcard property is this two-bed flat in an ex-local authority building. You might set the cat among the pigeons here. Estates aren't everyone's cup of tea. But the sweetener is the basketball court within shooting distance. Slam dunk. Ooh, you're learning. What do you feel about the block? You've seen that this is a flat that comes to the basketball court. <laughs> it is, yeah. It's, it's an amazing area. Mm. I mean, it's beautifully maintained. This flat is still 10 grand over budget, but I have it on good authority that the vendor is open to offers. It has a bright, spacious sitting room, the biggest kitchen I've shown them. And there shouldn't be any squabbling over the bedrooms, as both are a pretty good size. The only downside is right outside the window. This is amazingly big. It is really big. I think it's massive. Oh, well, you had to point it out. Compared to my last flat, where it took me about two months to get used to going to sleep with the noise. You but know, you this, did get used to it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I sleep through anything now. I think you two should go and look at the bedrooms. These two are so laid back, they're almost horizontal. It's a slam dunk. That's what I reckon, anyway. I, I can't get over the size of it. What do you reckon? One massive bedroom. Good. Two massive bedrooms. Two <laughs> massive ones. Kirsty. I didn't say it, they said it. That is... That's a, that's a, that's a double bed with uh, room to run around in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, I definitely didn't think we'd find somewhere with that with, much space. Yeah. Hasn't Chris said that in every place you've shown him? Yes, but here it's true. This flat has over 200 square foot more than the last. Kitchen could do with the tart up. It's a really good size. It's a really good size. The answer to this flat is that some people are put off by the idea of living on a council estate. I'm, I'm actually astonished. I'm still slightly staggered about how massive this place is and the location. The only thing for me is the Clapham property was such a good one. It I was mean, such a good one. We know that area well, and so it's, it's kind of... It's a good dilemma to have. A well-played game, but which flat will come out on top? Over in Tooting, Gemma and Dad have managed to get to grips with an area they knew very little about. They've decided to forego her fixation with location in favour of a second view at property number three. So it's back to the spacious Victorian villa in Tooting. Is this little oasis of tranquillity enough to lure Gemma away from her beloved Wimbledon? We spent a long time looking around Wimbledon. I think we realised then that we weren't going to get what I wanted size-wise in Wimbledon. From my perspective, I think it's a good investment. Uh, this is I a very good investment, we, yeah. If it wasn't my daughter, it was just a cold, hard investment. Yeah. No problem at all. But she's got to live here. Right now, 
interestingly, guys, when you come in here, it will not look like that. Ian, just behind you, just pick up that piece of... In the next six to eight months, those are going to be restored. Take a hell of a difference, won't it? Yeah. It will be fantastic. I mean, that's beautiful. Mm, that's Want to go and have a look up in the flat? Yeah. One last time? OK. Ian ain't letting the grass grow under his feet. He means business. He's just through the door and he's already decided what he wants. Me, personally, I think it's worthwhile putting an offer in on it. I think Gemma's come around to that way of thinking as well, if I'm right. Yeah, I do like the flat. I really like the flat. We, think... we wouldn't want to go away and say, well, think about it, yeah. and then you lose it. Okie doke. Well, let's go and find somewhere we can make an offer. OK. Yeah. Yeah. For Gemma, it's all starting to sink in. The dream of owning her first home is in sight. Bye-bye, building. Yep. Hope to see you when you've been repainted. That could be ours. Yep. Can a deal be done to make it theirs? Brothers Matt and Chris also opted to go back to the third property we showed them, the ex-local authority flat in the swanky spot of Pimlico. It's a block that's only five storeys, and this would go in the twins' favour. Any higher and some mortgage providers may not be willing to lend. But inside, the bigger the better. There, there seems to be a lot of storage space. I know you're concerned that you have more clothes than most girls, <laughs> but I think you've got the place to put them. Yeah. Plus any other pieces of equipment. Yeah, agreed. Like the balls. Basketballs, of course. So it's pretty scruffy, the bathroom, isn't it? It is, if I think with... A little bit of money saved up over a few months, we could probably do what we wanted with it. We're not talking a lot of money. And the tiling you could probably do yourselves. Yeah. Once you get your own drill, there's no holding you back. A second viewing of a property gives you the chance to look at things without rose-tinted spectacles. Look at the practicalities. And come up with any questions you may want to ask the estate agent. How does it feel now? It's quite nerve-wracking because this is a realistic possibility. That's the compromise, I yeah. think. Yeah, it doesn't bother me at all. Some people will walk into the sitting room and say, no way. And just I mean, because we're not bothered by it, would it affect the ability to sell it on? Do you want to go somewhere and have a drink and discuss? Yes, please. Right. Yeah. After you, sir. Chris and Matt loved the space and potential of the Pimlico flat, but they also loved the style and location of the flat in Clapham. This really could go either way. Where are you at the moment? The Clapham is the safe bet. We know the area very well. Mm -hmm. The only concern is whether we get in there and find that it isn't big enough. And I think in comparison to the one we've just been to revisit, it seems like it may be one that will increase in value. Matt and Chris are going to think about this huge decision overnight. And all I can do is make sure we have all the information on both flats to help them. I'm very conscious that you feel, in a, in a good way, the responsibility of the money that your father left you, and we've got to make sure we do it right. Yeah, agreed. 48 hours ago, we thought we'd never find anything that you could stand up in and <laughs> have equal bedrooms. So we're in a really good position. Yeah. Tomorrow we will chat, and hopefully I will make an offer on one of those flats. That'd Yay! That would be fantastic. <laughs> Having initially set their hearts on Wimbledon, Gemma and her dad have been seduced by the extra space and investment potential of the Tooting flat. We've heard an offer has already been rejected, so there's no time to beat around the bush, Kirsty. Property number three, do you want to make an offer on it? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> the asking price is 195. It's going at 187. It's offer at 182. 187 is five, five more grand. than yeah. that. Yeah. 187? Yeah. OK. Riz, it's Kirsty. I've had a conversation with my clients. We think that an offer of 187 would indicate to your clients that we're very serious about it. OK, bye. Ian's looking worried. No, I'm not worried. No. I always look like this. <laughs> <laughs> The agent is quick to return my call. Riz. Right. 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 What are they planning to do?
Thank you so much. Obviously, you know. <clears throat> he said they want something nearer to the asking price. You don't want to go any higher, do you? If we up it, yeah. it's got to be a final offer. You can't continue going up and up. No. Up. My only concern is that there was another offer on the table at the weekend. And if they then want to get back in touch again and get told so they put in 187 and they go with 190. But I'll tell you what I'd be inclined to do. Yeah? Offer 190 and say, if it's not acceptable, we'll leave it on the table. OK. Yeah, I'm happy with that. It's crunch time. I've got one last stab at clinching this property. The final offer's in, and it doesn't take long for the response to come back. For my money, that was too quick to be positive. Hello? You said no. <laughs> Thanks so much. Hey! <laughs> Are you pleased, Ian? I'm pleased, yeah, of course I'm pleased. You're pleased? Yeah, that's brilliant. You're happy with the price? Yes. Gemma, are you yeah. pleased? Yeah, very pleased. You've got yourself an apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. I've got the last of my mine left. I'm just going to have to do this little... <laughs> <laughs> Call that a fanfare. Some tooting might have been more appropriate, as that's where, with a little help from the bank of Mum and Dad, Gemma secured her first home. Two years on, how does our northern lass feel about her move into the unknown? I didn't know anything about the area, I didn't know where it was in terms of transport or how long it would take me to get to work. So when they showed me a flat here for the first time, I was a bit unnerved by it. Um, Luckily, Phil was on hand. He knew a lot about the area. He gave me a lot of information and guidance on it. And I absolutely loved the flat. Big enough to even accommodate musically-minded Gemma's cherished piano, the flat hit all the right notes inside and out. I think the communal garden was a big swing for me because it meant that I did have the outside space in the green area that I couldn't necessarily afford in Wimbledon, and that was the compromise that I was willing to accept. In her original search, the Wimbledon dream was one that Kirsty and I had to gently shatter. I don't think I'd fully thought through um, what I could afford um, and the kind of realities of, of what I would want on a day-to-day -day living basis. I ended up with a much bigger flat than I'd ever thought I'd be able to afford, simply from moving slightly out of my search area. Since she moved in, Gemma's been working long hours. Downtime is precious and these days often spent with a fellow trainee solicitor. But the doors always open to accommodate visitors from the north, which was a priority on Gemma's search. Having this flat's just given me the space to be able to do it, which I didn't think I'd be able to. I've got a sofa bed in my living room, which means that my parents can come and stay with me. My sister stays with me quite regularly, as do a number of friends who, when they're visiting London, one of Dad Ian's priorities was that Gemma would feel at ease wherever she chose to live. I think, in comparison to where I was living before, the area feels much, much safer. It helps being near the main road, so there is a lot more people around looking out for each other as you come off the tube on a night and things like that. Dad will be happy to know that. Tooting's also fantastic socially for me. I think being on the Northern Line's been really helpful because all my friends can get here quite easily. There's a large number of cafes and bars and things, and it's just quite a relaxed atmosphere. Gemma's worked out her property's already gone up in value by more than 10%, so perhaps the parental investment in her well-being may pay off in more ways than one. It's actually worked out really well. It's helped me get on the housing ladder for the couple of years that I needed a hand from my mum and dad, and it's also meant that they've had a little bit of return on an investment to the level that they probably wouldn't have got if they'd just put the money in a bank account. So it's worked out really well for everyone involved. Great to hear. I think we can give ourselves a wee pat on the back. If I'd been left on my own, I wouldn't have found the flat just simply because I didn't know anything about tooting. A little bit of a risk, but as it turns out, it's fantastic for getting into work and it's still got that nice buzz without being Wimbledon where I can't afford to live. <laughs> so tooting is suiting our soon-to-be-qualified solicitor very well indeed. Gemma's story is a good reminder that if your cash can't buy you what you want where you want it, then it could be time to stretch the search. 
board a bus or take a train to the fringes of your favourite area and you might find some real property gems. They could have character and more space than you've ever dreamt of at a fraction of the price. Twins Matt and Chris had a similar dilemma to Gemma, but after much agonising, they went for location over space and chose the Clapham flat. Kirsty had the go-ahead to offer £345,000, which was rejected. I upped it to 347 but sadly this was also turned down. After going back to the flat for another look, Matt and Chris decided not to re-offer at the top of their 350 grand budget. Was that the end of their home buying dream? Or did it go on to new heights? It was a year ago when Kirsty took on the tall order of finding towering twins Chris and Matt somewhere that would, quite frankly, fit them both in. There was a lot to consider, not to mention space for their size 14 shoes. I'm looking forward to seeing how they're all getting on. In their search for a home with future rental potential, twin brothers Chris and Matt went for the one in the more familiar area of Clapham. But when they couldn't get it for a favourable price, let it go and committed to widening their search area. What then happened? One of the things, places you mentioned to us was Ballon, because um, I know you're a fan of the area. Yes. And so we came and had a look and just so happened, I think it was the first flat actually in Ballon that we looked at, was the one that we've subsequently bought. Was it an area that you'd considered before Kirsty and I suggested? That's the thing, not at all. We'd, I think both of us really, with the, as far south as we'd been was Clapham, and we really like Clapham. We were so fixated on getting as close to the city as possible for a short commute yeah. that we kind of discounted it, which was, in hindsight, mm. naive, I think. Having lived here for just over seven months, they're now completely enamoured with their new neighbourhood. It's been great. Balance perfect for both of us. Great bars, excellent coffee shops for our work. Commuting up the northern line is really easy. It's not too overpopulated, it feels. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, we love it. By venturing just that little further south, the boys found a home that offers them nearly 300 square foot more than the one they liked in Clapham. Part of a large house divided into five flats. Theirs is split over three levels. One bedroom on the lower level, one on the top, and the bathroom and living area in the middle. It also gives them a share of the freehold in a street full of expensive family homes and only five or six minutes walk from the tube. Great for now, it's also a good future investment. Please come in, if you head up and take right. a look at the room on the left first. This is it. Yep. Lovely and light. Yeah. And whose bedroom's this one? This is my bedroom, even though the ceiling's a bit lower because it's in the eaves. They stand up perfectly well here. Oh, this is great. Yeah. I mean, you've, got, you've lost a bit of ceiling height, but you've gained storage. Yeah, the storage is fantastic. Because so many places we looked around, you'd have maybe a little cupboard under the stairs. Mm. But this, we can get, get two bags of golf clubs, six yeah. hoovers and a mattress or something. Awesome. And the, um, the size 14 shoes, I remember. Yeah, the, uh, like the collection, it takes up a lot of space, so I needed it. <laughs> Chris's bedroom has slightly more headroom and also good storage. And this is my room. Light and bright again. Big ceiling height. Yeah, it's lovely. Seen. It does give a bit more of an illusion of space, so yeah. it feels like a good size room. Well, that's the thing as well, because it's got a, the wardrobe, is a built in wardrobe, is double height, so you can get two racks of suits in a work if you want to. Yeah. Almost even Stevens in terms of bedroom size, then, and the open plan living space is the icing on the cake. Wow, you have done well. Did you know the moment you walked in, that's the one? I, I came to see it first without Chris, and I was really excited. So I, I remember calling Chris straight away saying, well, you have to come down here. This seems like a sizeable flat for London, considering their budget was £350,000. So how much was it on at? It was on at forty five. so we kind of thought it was way out of our price range. But the estate agent said he's a property developer looking for a quick sell. OK. Maybe he, he'd go for a deal. OK. So Matt kind of came down on a speculative whim and... What did and you offer? There. Uh, we we thought we'd go in aggressively and just offer three, four, five. So uh, under our budget and with a bit of a tiny bit of wiggle room. Okay. So um, and how did that go down? Not very well. I but, don't think. But, but not as badly as I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Because okay. he didn't say outright no. See you later. It was more of a, um, you know, we can't go that low. But do you think you can go up a bit? And then we started going up incrementally in one one thousands. Okay. <laughs> And eventually... Squeezing the pit. Yeah, we squeezed it, yeah. What did you get it for? 
We're not going for 355, so... 355 on a 425 asking price. Mm, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So I think we were just very lucky with the timing, really. Well, and also good tactics. Good mm. negotiating. We learned that from Kirsty, the aggressive yeah. side. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let her know you said that. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great achievement and all the more poignant for these two. If my memory serves me correctly, this, buying this was part of a legacy from your dad, wasn't it? It was indeed, yes. So, I mean, wouldn't he be proud? Wisely invested, good deal done. Yeah, I think he'd be very proud. It's a shame he didn't get to see it, but um, I think everyone that's been to see it has said great things. What a result. Many, many. Congratulations. Thank you Lovely very much. flat and a superb Thanks very much, deal. Bill. Thank you very much. Yes. Great to know it all panned out. Well, it's good to see that Chris and Matt finally have fallen on their feet, even if they are a size 14. They've got themselves a great flat and a really lovely place to call home. I'm quite sure they'll be happy here for many years to come. <laughs>